describe your weaknesses? Oh, this is the dreaded question. Here are some things to avoid. <laughs> and welcome back to my channel thank you very much for tuning in for part two of the interview season fun if you missed part one i'll pop a link down below in the comments but otherwise let's dive straight into the rest of the video can you describe your weaknesses Ugh, we cannot talk about strengths without talking about weaknesses this is the dreaded question and it gets asked all the time here are some things to avoid when you're answering this question with this question, you want it to be something that you can ultimately turn into a positive or into something that you can work on and improve. So that could be like a skills-based thing, like don't blame other people for things like this. So don't say like, oh, one of my weaknesses is like data analysis because um, I had a really bad school for this or like my PI wasn't very supportive at my previous research project so I never really got to learn it. Like try and avoid doing that. So like having a sense of self-awareness. Being honest is another key one. You do want to be honest, like you don't want to um, sort of make something up, like try and avoid saying I'm a perfectionist. Everyone says that one great like i'm affectionate so i just do everything so well like you know like come up with something a little bit better um that there's scope to improve on but you can ultimately turn it into a positive at the end of the day it's a really 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 hard question so definitely take some time to think about this and prepare and think about what you might say personally before going into the interview it's always good to have an answer ready for this one what skills do you want to learn from this phd okay so this one is a quite a fun one the first thing i would say is be specific when I say be specific, I'm not just talking about specific skills, I'm talking about the specific school and the specific program as well. This is your chance to again bring in why you've chosen to apply to their specific program. Have a read through the website, sort of scour through and see what's specific about their program that you were like, ooh, I really wanna apply there. Maybe they have some really good course requirement that taught you how to write grants and do scientific presentation and everything. So scientific communication and improving that was a skill that I wanted to learn and hone throughout the PhD program. Bring in your previous experiences here. So you can back this up with maybe make it kind of a strength and say that it's something that you want to improve, but bring in times where you've had to use these specific skills and you want to like improve on them or bring in examples. That's always good because it brings in a sense of personality and I think that that is a real strength. Another thing is I think the temptation can be with this type of question is to jump straight into all like the scientific technical skills that you're going to want to learn. Like I want to learn how to run X assay or use this equipment or use that equipment and that's all great to say because it shows that you have an understanding of your project that you might want to do it shows that you are aware of the resources that that university has but also i wouldn't fall into the trap of just listing all of those scientific skills it's also important to recognize that as a phd student you're coming away as a research skill set right so that includes scientific communication grant writing paper writing all of the sort of more translational skills that come with being a phd student it's understanding that you're not just there to do research obviously you're there to do research that's not what i mean it's understanding that there's there's more there's more that you could do as a science as a scientist it's preparing you to become an independent researcher and showing an awareness and an understanding of that at the interview stage i think is a real real strength in your opinion what is the biggest advancement in your field so talking about interviews wouldn't be complete if we weren't talking about the odd curveball question this is a common one i've been asked it in probably at least half of my phd interviews so it's one that we definitely should cover and you should be prepared to have an answer to and a unique personal spin on what in your opinion is the biggest advancement in insert your field here let's break this down the first thing that i would do is be a bit creative this is like a fun question don't treat it as an interview question treat it as like a fun thinking question these people who are interviewing you now they've asked you this question they want to know how you think and how you respond to these curveball questions and what your genuine opinions are they're not asking you for a right answer there is no right or wrong answer it's more your reasoning and your thinking behind it so don't be afraid to get creative and show your personality this is your chance to show that you do know about your subject and that you have been reading around it maybe there's there's some wacky ideas that you had when you were reading a paper or doing a project that you thought oh that could be really good for example mine i mean it was it was a while ago now but i was talking about um drug discovery that was something that i was really interested in for antibiotic resistance so i talked a bit about ai and drug discovery and how that was like quite a cutting edge advancement and how i thought that that could impact drug discovery in the clinic and things like that so bring in your personal experience again here so like for me i talked about my clinical perspective and how that would help and sort of tying it all back so make it more personal to you this is also a great opportunity 
opportunity to showcase your knowledge because it shows that you like kind of do know what you're talking about. Again, like I said before, you do know what's going on in the literature. Finding out where the field is and predicting the next advancement is a super fun skill and a good one for a PhD student. Don't be afraid to bring in your experiences again here. I can't stress this enough because people want to know examples and why you think what you think. So make sure you're backing up everything and your thought process with examples. Like they want to know that there's actually some scientific backing to it and that's what you've seen in the past and that's why you think it's a big advancement. So making sure you bring in your opinion and backing up and justifying your ideas is a very good thing to do for this question. Can you tell me about a time that you failed? This is another really, 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 really common one and something that I have quite a set framework for. So that's another reason that I wanted to include this one in this video. Tell me about a time that you, insert scenario here, for example, tell me about a time you overcame a challenge, led a team, disagreed with someone, failed. These are all really common, tell me about a time when. So what I did with this question is I listed out literally every tell me about a time I could think of. I was like, tell me about a time I did this, did that. Tell me about a time you showed initiative. Tell me about a time. And you can get these pretty easily off Google by Googling like example interview questions and things. So yeah, just listing out as many of these and then really racking my brains. Like I went back years um, to find at least two examples for each. So for example, tell me about a time you overcame a challenge. I'd use one research associated one and one like more personal associated one, things like that. Making sure that you have a mix of research, sciencey ones and like non-sciencey ones and um, to really showcase that you're like a rounded person and you possess those like skills that aren't purely related to science that will enable you to do a good job at being a PhD student. So that's one I would definitely prepare for. Have them written down on a post-it note in bullet point form and that way you can just like revise them before you walk into the interview and you'll have something to pick from from your repertoire repertoire and it'll minimize the chance of catching you off guard. Wow, we have covered a lot of interview questions. I know it's kind of like information overload, but this is everything that I kind of wish I'd known before going into my PhD interviews. Um, so I really hope that that's been kind of helpful. Just show your enthusiasm, show your personality and do your best. Another top tip that I would say is to not write a script. This is a really common one. I started off by writing scripts and it really is more of a hindrance. Like don't write a script. All that's gonna do is mean that you don't remember to say 60 to 80 percent of what you've written down and you'll get stressed about it so don't write a script how i did it when i was practicing and prepping for interviews like was writing down bullet points and then that's much easier to like get into my brain so that when i'm in the interview room sat in front of someone i can like remember back to the bullet points rather than remembering back to a big block of text that's what helped me so I don't know, take from that what you will. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you watched the whole thing, thank you. It means a lot. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments, whether it's been helpful, not helpful. And if you want to see anything else, PhD application season related, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed. It is amazing. And I'm grateful to every single one of those people that want to like sit and watch my videos. It's great. And I'll be back with another video next week. So um, yeah, I'll see you guys then. Bye.